GTA 4 by far is the darkest game in the GTA franchise. This game went as far as showing Nico Bellic attempting to transition into the lifestyle that he hoped to have been good, but unfortunately it got captivated by the dark and gritty lore of Liberty City. In this video, as a Halloween special, I'm going to list the 10 darkest moments in GTA 4. For the record, it doesn't include any moments from The Lost and Damned and The Ballad of Gay Tony. I hope you enjoy the video and if you do, don't forget to like and subscribe. Number 10. Gracie Ancelotti's Kidnapping Photograph this is the part of the game where Packy asks you to take a photograph of Gracie Anzalotti while she's gagged up and tied to the chair that she's sitting on. To get a proper photo of Gracie, you have to make sure that she's looking at you. And to do so, you have to do this. Smile for your daddy, Grace. Fuck you! Where you been? I've been jonesing for some fries for about five hours. Shut Don't cause me no more trouble. Look up here. Where am I? Where am I? Oh. <laughs> Daddy. What's dark about this is the silent background and hearing nothing but her helpless cries to have someone come and save her. Even after photographing Gracie, Nico tells Packy that the people who do that are sick. Nice one, Nico. Old man Ancelotti won't believe his girls hold up with a guy no more. Not unless that guy is into some sick shit. Later on, Peggy. Number 9. Flatline. This is the part of the game where Jimmy Pegarino wants you to silence his personal bodyguard at the hospital after turning states. His bodyguard ended up in the hospital due to having a heart attack after Pegarino threatened him over the phone. When at the hospital, and if you disguise yourself as a nurse, then you can take Anthony out by silently turning off his life support. The darkest part about this is the dialogue while in the room with him. He's not looking too good, Doc. Can I have some time alone with my patient? I want to stretch my legs anyway. Boss? Peg, is that you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, shit, Nico. You here to see the boss? It's just this way. Oh, wait, isn't the boss in jail? Uh, what are you here for? Ah, oh, shit. I didn't have a choice. They were gonna put me away for some hard time. I never thought it'd be me that turned rat. Oh, it looks like I messed something up. Sorry about that, Anthony. You can hear Anthony's last words of him apologizing, then crying in pain while he's dying. And all the while, Nico says, Oh, it looks like I messed something up. Sorry about that, Anthony. In other attempts of the mission, Nico will otherwise say, Go to sleep, Anthony. You look tired. This, in my opinion, is a pretty dark moment. Number 8. Elizabetta Kills Manny This is referring to the beginning cutscene of the mission, Have a Heart, where we see Elizabetta do something absolutely crazy. Hey, man, this is getting out of control. The police are all over me. I can feel them. So? 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 So I'm gonna go to prison for a long time. <laughs> so my life is over. Oh, God, all this work for nothing, man. Oh, being tough in a man's world. I guess I wasn't so tough, huh? Oh, hey, turn states? Everyone's a rat! Not me. <laughs> Whatever! Open up, man! Who is it? It's the streets, man. Okay, hold on! All right, man. Oh. This is what Manny's oh. all about, man. Manny, 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 Manny! Now, man. word up, bitch! You better stop slinging that shit on my streets, yo! We don't want it anymore! Hey, OJ, you catching this? Rolling, what rolling! What is this, Manny, for fuck's the sake? The streets have spoken! Now leave my people alone! You, Nico! What are you doing here? Oh. Oh, I am not in the mood for this right now! Well, he said he was going to bust the dealer. Can you help me clean this mess up? There's a doctor in Broca who can help. Come on. 
Let's put him in my car. This is the moment that shocked a lot of the Let's Players that I've watched on YouTube, because no one expected this to happen at all. And the darkest part about this is that Manny always wanted to clean the streets and get drug dealers busted. Unfortunately, while busting the biggest drug dealer in Bohan, he ends up coming face to face with his fate, which is his death. Even Nico brings that up when talking to the doctor upon bringing the bodies to him. I've got some bodies in here. I've heard you'll take care of them. Uh, natural causes? Of course. Seems like a bullet in the head is as natural as it gets in this town. They weren't sick, were they? No. Had a few problems with sick bodies. No one wants a liver if it's riddled with tumors, huh? Know what I mean? No. Shit. Looks like the bullet went right through this one's eye. And the price of eyes is through the roof at the moment. <sighs> Fine. Can I leave you with these or what? Sure. I'll have these organs out on the street in no time. They're yeah, gonna help a lot of folks. <sighs> He'd been trying to help the streets his whole life. Maybe he'll actually be doing it now. Number 7. Jeff Harlingford. Needless to say, this character is absolutely unhinged, deranged, and off his rockers. This is a Stranger in Freaks character that appears in GTA 4 with three side missions. For those who don't know this character, I will slowly show you how dark he becomes along with the story. In this first mission, Jeff meets Nico at a corner in Northern Algonquin where he asks and pays Nico to follow his wife, who he suspects to have been cheating on him because she's with another man. Hey, how you doing? Uh, good. How are you? Well, I'm shit, to be perfectly frank, buddy. Fucking shit. What? Terrible. Oh, what's wrong with you? Me? My life's a fucking train wreck. I cannot believe this is happening to me. Bitch! 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 Hey, come on, calm down. Fucking bitch! Who are you talking about? Who's this bitch? Fucking whore of a fucking wife, that's who! Okay, what did she do? Uh, my lovely bride, the mother of my son, is up there right now, fucking some prick behind my back. After all I've done for that tramp whore! Ah! Hey, you okay? Hey, come on, calm down. You're going to do yourself some serious damage if you keep going on like that. <laughs> it's only angina. Come on, Jeff. Be calm. Jeff, be cool. Come on, champ. You can do this. Be a winner. Hey, <sighs> mister. Are you okay? No, I'm a winner. I can do anything. Great. See you later. Hey, you know, you could do me a favor here. <laughs> you know. Uh, what? Take some photos. Text them to me. <laughs> you want me to text you photos of your own wife? <laughs> I'll pay, buddy. I've got a black card. <laughs> I'm afraid I only take cash. I'll give you cash, right? 500. Just follow them, take some photos, text them to me. Come on, here they come. Uh, here's my card. After following Jeff's wife and the man to the Superstar Cafe, and before taking the photos of them, you can hear a conversation about how Jeff is haunting his wife. He gets so angry and jealous, I don't know what to do. You know, I'm here for you whenever you need me. It's just that he gets so angry and jealous, I don't know what to do. I found bugs in my phone. I came home and my panty drawer was empty. Turned out he'd sent the contents to a lab for DNA analysis. It's not your fault. I trust you in his position. He wants to get a Trackify chip put in the base of my spine. Says I wouldn't mind if I didn't have something to hide. Have I told you how beautiful your eyes are? I mean, it's not like I keep things from him. I just don't want to become a paraplegic or anything. It'd be criminal for a woman with legs like yours not to be able to use them. You meet a guy with a nice smile and a black card, but you don't have any idea what kind of monster he could turn into. I'm not gonna change on you. It just doesn't make sense to me. What makes him think I'd cheat on him? A girl can have male friends. It's not like every guy I hang out with is trying to screw me, is it? <laughs> You're wasted on him. After taking the photos and calling Jeff outside, you can hear Jeff getting increasingly angry and sounding somewhat unhinged. The bitch! The cum-guzzling bitch! She kisses a kid with that mouth. Ugh, I love her so much! Oh, calm, Jeff. Calm, be calm, calm down. Take your own advice, Jeff. Be calm. This doesn't necessarily mean she's cheating on you. In the second mission, Jeff calls Nico to meet him in the parking garage near Lancaster, and here's what happens. Hey, this is Jeff! Yeah, you remember that happy-go-lucky guy? The one you told about his two-faced cheating slut? 
lot of a wife? I just took some photos. But yeah, uh, how you doing now anyway? You leave that bitch? You could say I uh, cut some ties. Meet me at the garage off Silicon Street at the northeast corner of Middle Park. I need your help. Hey. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. I got a bit of a problem. A bit of a big fucking problem. What's going on? Yeah. Jeff really did it this time. Jeff went too far. Jeff's been a bad boy. A really bad boy. What are you saying, lunatic? Remember my wife, Shirley? She had an accident in the kitchen. What kind of an accident? Oh, the kind of accident where you stab yourself 50 fucking times with a kitchen knife? You fucking whore. Fuck my friend, will you? Huh? Well, who's laughing now, bitch? Huh? Not you, you fucking dead whore! Hey, buddy. Whoa, calm down. Hey, fuck you! Don't be an idiot. Now, what do you want me to do? Get rid of her and get rid of the car, hey? Okay, but it's going to cost you. Five grand. Sure, whatever. Give me the keys. Put the gun away. Uh, yeah, okay, thanks. Oh, Jeff really messed up this time, didn't he? Oh. Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Nico then has to help Jeff dispose of his dead wife's body. After Nico does that, he calls Jeff to let him know that it's done and to make sure that he calms down. I got rid of that body for you. You should be clean. Now all you need to worry about is your conscience. The whore! She brought this on herself! Practically stabbed herself by letting him give it to her! Thanks! After about a few days later, we have a third encounter with Jeff. We meet him over in Suffolk where he's looking through some binoculars, and this is where things take it to the next level. Oh, come on! Excuse me, I didn't see you. Hey! How you doing? Good. Hey, you remember me? Uh, huh? You do, huh? Yeah, you took those photos of my wife. Yeah. My late wife. Yes, I remember you. Yeah, yeah, I, I owe you. Jeff owes you, uh, Jeff and you, you know, buddies, pals, yeah? Uh, we've been through some shit together, didn't we? I don't know about I, that. That's why I feel I can tell you things. Please, yeah. don't. Well, you know, life hasn't always been kind. My mom, you know, she left my dad, and my dad... Very well, fucking interesting. I need a fucking friend, man. My life is hell, all right? Or, oh, I got married again, yeah, yeah. That's right, she's a nice girl. Or so I thought. Here we go. She's up there right now. She's having a drink with her ex. Yeah, she's touching his leg. She's getting all wet. You've got to calm down. I need you to kill her. What? I'll pay. You'll do range. Well, then screw you. Screw you. Screw you. Calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. Calm down before I give you injury. God damn you. Uh, uh, you're just like all the rest. Is this the police? Look, I'm bloody sorry about this, but I think I've run some poor chap over. He looks dead. Of course I'll hold. In my opinion, in the accumulation of everything that happened with this character, has to be one of the darkest moments in GTA 4. Number 6. Roman Sorrow. After Dimitri portrays Nico in the Russian Revolution, things take a dark turn for the cousins Belik. Roman hides in fear and Nico comes looking for him after having called him. The darkest thing about this mission is when we approach both the apartment and the depot, seeing it burn into flames and hearing the dialogue followed by it. Holy fuck, it's fucking burning! The whole place! I've got to go in! I've got to get something! Leave it, cousin. This place is gone. They burnt it! They fucking burnt it, Nico! Do you know how long it took me to get a place of my own? You got off the boat and I was here for you! I know you were. I got here and I had nothing! Nobody! I worked my way up from the fucking dirt! I've got nothing left! Not my home, not my business, nothing! They took it all! I'm sorry, Roman. I'm really sorry, but we have to go. We'll meet Mallory and Bohan. You still have her. And you! For all the good you've done me! Do you know how long it took me to get set up here? You don't, because it was easy for you. You had it all from day one. It took me months to get some cash together. Finally, I bought a cab, and then another. 
Then I got the depot. I slept under my desk at that place for over a year. Then I got the apartment. The apartment you thought was so shitty. Well, it doesn't matter. And now it's gone, along with everything else. I said I was sorry. You have a lot to apologize for. Since you got here, I've had my computer smashed. I've been beaten up. I was kidnapped and then shot in the stomach. My apartment got burned down and so did my business. Things have been going so great. Just Right since you showed up. You remember that time when we went to the bar back home and found it raised to the ground? Just a pile of rubber. Everything smashed. Except for that one bottle of vodka. Yeah, we sat down and finished it off there and then. Wait, wait. I don't want to talk about back home. We're here in America now. And I should be thinking about my life here. My life, which is ruined. Just drive. Shut up. Drive. <laughs> Hey, beautiful. What's up? No, what do you mean? I haven't been crying Thank since you. my allergies. <laughs> Nico's wearing this new cologne. <laughs> yeah, trying to impress Michelle or something. They're coming to your cousins. Are you there? Thanks. Thanks. Drive safely. Great. See you in a bit, beautiful. My dream? It was just that. A dream. I can't have the tavern now. I have nothing to buy it with. I, ha I have nothing. I told you. You still have Mallory. But I wanted to really have her. I wanted to marry her. You can still do that. I had bought her a ring. That is what I wanted to show you. It was a beautiful ring. <laughs> it <was worth> you. <laughs> now I have nothing. <laughs> Come on. Oh. Roman, pull yourself together. You've been here before. Positive mental attitude. Come on. Mm. At least they want me dead, and not you. <sighs> I do not think it will be much difference to them, Nico. One dead Belik will give them a little bit of happiness while they wait for next. I do not care, though. We are in this situation. We must deal with it. Bring on Bohan! Okay! We can hear Roman's anguish taking place, where we hear the anger directed towards Nico turning slowly and slowly into desolation. The saddest part about hearing all of this is that Roman had a ring for Mallory in his apartment that's now burnt to ashes, and also how he lost everything that he had to work hard to get before Nico arrived to Liberty City. In my opinion, this is a pretty dark moment. Number 5. Nico and Mrs. Faustin's Conversations by conversations, I do mean that plurally, because there's two different conversations that end up showing two darkest moments in the game. The first conversation takes place at the beginning of the mission, Rake to Blow. Nico knocks at Mr. Faustin's door in anticipation to see him, but sees Mrs. Faustin instead. Nico is invited in while Mr. Faustin is on his way from being out. While Nico sits down and has tea with Mrs. Faustin, this conversation takes place and truly reveals Nico's dark past. Sit down. Thank you. You want some tea? Sure. Mikhail doesn't let me use this anymore. Says it makes us look like barbarians. Uncivilized. Like immigrants. Oh, yeah? I know what you're thinking. It is a bit funny coming from him. <laughs> he did not used to be like this. When we were young, at home, he was beautiful. He was happy. He made me happy. But um, then something changed years ago. I never quite knew what it was. So many years I wondered what it was or what was wrong with me that I did not see it in him. Or I changed him. Life is complicated. I. I never thought I'd live like this. No? When the war came, I did bad things. And after the war, I thought nothing of doing bad things. I killed people, smuggled people, sold people. And you don't worry about your soul? <sighs> after you walk into a village and you see 50 children all sitting neatly in a row against the church wall, each with their throats cut and their hands chopped off. You realize that the creature that could do this doesn't have a soul. God is very complicated. You mustn't give up hope. Huh. Well, I don't know about that. Привет, Привет, what is that? Uh... I tell you one thing and you ignore me! <gasps> 
You stupid oh. bitch! <laughs> Nico Bellic, baby. Pretty dark, right? It's not over yet though, because after Dimitri has Mr. Faustin killed, we meet Mrs. Faustin again, where we hear another dark situation. Nico! How are you? Mrs. Faustin. It's nice to see you. I'm okay. You know, it's difficult. Yes, very difficult. I was uh, sorry to hear about your husband. <sighs> Worry? Maybe, unlike that treacherous rat Dimitri. <laughs> he and I are not friends. My husband was not perfect. Far from it. He was awful. A murdering, drug-addicted bully. In many ways, the world is better off without him. But now I am alone. I'm uh, sorry about that. And my daughter grows up without a father. She's learning a bitter lesson very early. Yes, she's bad. And now the money is gone, the house got repossessed, and we are living me. in a one-room apartment. The land of opportunity. <laughs> I'd rather be back in Russia. At least there, people don't pretend life has any pleasure. Do you need money? I need more than that. I need someone to come and get the man to leave my daughter alone. I can see he is a slime ball. I think he is trying to turn her into a stripper, or even worse. What guy? Some slime ball hangs out on Dillon Street in Shuttler. I can't do much for you. But I will get this slime ball to leave your daughter alone. Nico, thank you. But please, no more killing. You can see Nico looking away as if he feels absolutely guilty about what happened to Mr. Faustin and what happened to his family. And as a result of Mr. Faustin getting killed, Mrs. Faustin is now dealing with bankruptcy and has to live elsewhere with her daughter. This is pretty sad to see to be honest. Number 4. Darko Brevich's Fate A person who's entirely played through all of GTA 4 without skipping any cutscenes, dialogues, and went the extra mile to do the side missions and activities will learn how this character, Darko Brevich, has truly impacted Nico's life. For those who don't know, Darko Brevich stood alongside Nico and Florian Kravich, who you now know as Bernie Crane, in the Yugoslav Wars with 12 other men. Darko, unfortunately, developed an addiction for drugs and betrayed his unit for $1,000 by having them killed by a group of invaders. This altogether ruined Nico completely. Towards the end of the game, Nico is helped by the IAA Fed and brings Darko to Liberty City, where Nico can finally confront him for his actions. Here's the confrontation. You remember me? Pussy me. Ne was not yet. I don't know you. Yes, you do. I'm the one who survived. Nico. Hello. Rezi mi zašto. Zašto? Zato što smo bili prijatelji. Svi smo odrasli zajedno. Mitar, Dragan, Goran, Mio, mogu da nastavim, Svio, ha? We were friends, but I am never friends. Friends that Goran and his guys killed. My fucking neighbors. Because of what? Because of shit. Lies. Fucking lies! So that makes it okay to stab your friends in the back? When everything you believe is shown to be shit, you make strange choices. Fuck yes. you! Strange choices? How much? <laughs> A thousand. <laughs> you kill my friends for one thousand dollars. How much do you charge to kill someone? You ruined me, you fuck! I needed the money. I had problems. You're a fucking junkie! <laughs> kill me, Dan! You fucking hypocrite. Trust me. You'll be doing me a favor! Ah! Nico. Come on. Let, let's go. Let him suffer. He, he knows what he did. It doesn't look like he enjoys life too much. Come on. 
Come on. One of the darkest things about that confrontation was hearing Darko basically call Nico a hypocrite and reminds him that he too gets paid to kill people. At this point, you're left with the choice to either kill Darko or let him live, none of which would resolve the pain that Nico feels. But one thing is for sure, letting Darko live lets Nico see that killing him would not bring him any resolve or closure on the matter. Nico is even praised by Roman, Bernie, and the UL paper agent for letting him go. However, if you end up choosing to kill Darko, a dark term comes about. You piece of shit! That was for everyone! That was for me! Okay, Nico, it's over. It's all over now. Leave him there. We should go, before anyone turns up! Will you take me over to Brucey's house? Nico shoots Darko 12 times, one shot for each person that he lost in the incident. Darko even thanks Nico for killing him. And Nico then tells Roman that he feels empty, followed by a string of sentences that would make you, the player, feel a sense of despair. I'm turning this shit off. I can't take listening to those annoying ads and DJs right now. There you go. You got your revenge. How does it feel? I don't know how it feels. I'm trying to take it all in. This is the moment you've been waiting for. For so long, Nick. What do you mean you don't know how you feel? I mean I don't know. I feel empty, okay? I feel empty. That's something. At least. No, Roman. It's nothing. The emptiness is what I was trying to get rid of by finding Darko. I've been empty ever since that day. I thought that revenge, killing Darko, might fill me up a bit. It might give me some substance. And it hasn't? No. It hasn't. Does that make you happy? Of course it doesn't make me happy, but... Maybe this is good for you. Maybe now that you know that revenge is not what you are after, you can look for it. Fulfillment in other places. Healthy ones. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Number 3. Mr. and Mrs. Bellick. It's time for Roman and Mallory's wedding, the happiest day of their lives, but, as you might have guessed, it all takes a dark turn. No matter what choice you made before the wedding, whether that's taking Pegorino's deal or exacting revenge on Dimitri, the wedding takes a complete 180 degree turn from the happy and exciting vibe that it has to something that leaves you completely heartbroken. Allow me to first show you what happens when you exact revenge on Dimitri before the wedding. I now pronounce you husband and wife, you may <laughs> kiss the bride. Mwah. <laughs> 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 Come on! Oh. Somebody call an ambulance! Call a fucking ambulance! She's dead! What? Oh shit! 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 She told me to leave it. I thought I had. I thought it was over. It's never over, Aya. Nico, you can't blame yourself. Of course I can! She's dead! Easy, 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 Aya, your brother, man. Easy. Calm down, man. Calm down. Nico, you have to get out of here. Yes, go on, man. Go. go on, man. We have to leave, man. Oh. Just leave. Get out of here. Don't go. Worry. We take care of this, man. Okay, leave. okay. Kate dies, and it leaves Nico desolated, thinking that the woman he was supposed to protect is now gone. Now, allow me to show you what happens when you take Pegorino's deal before the wedding. <laughs> yes! 
<laughs> Wonderful! Oh, okay. Wonderful. Oh, yes, I did it! Yes. Okay, thank you. Gift from Dmitry Raskolov. Oh my God! Roman! What a bomb, Bokhrad! Man, me find the meat and me call you. Leave. Okay. <laughs> this one hit hard. You go from hearing the cheers and excitement from the members of the wedding to a large shock after Dimitri's hitman fires his gun. And followed by the hitman's death, you hear Mallory scream, which makes Nico now know that Roman just got killed. This was absolutely painful to see, especially since Roman was vital to Nico's life in Liberty City, and even feels sorry that Nico dragged him into this mess. You betrayed everyone who ever came in contact with you. <coughs> you killed my cousin. I guess the survival of the fittest thing really meant a lot to you. Come on, Nico, man. Get out of here. Let's go. Come on. Wagwan, come on, let's go. Roman never hurt anyone. I know, I know. Let's go, man. Let's go. Number two, Roman's mother. That's right, you probably have played GTA 4 for as long as I have and don't even know how Roman's mother ended up being at the top of the list, but it is. During one of the dates that Nico has with Kate, which is not often done by a lot of people who have played GTA 4, Nico opens up to Kate about something that happened back home when she asks this. What have you been up to? Actually, I don't think I want to know. I'm sure it made you feel big and strong. Not really. Lord above, you don't even enjoy it. Then why do it? Can you do me a favor and stop preaching? I'm fine. I am what I am. For better or worse. Fair enough. A lifetime of trying to sort my brothers out has left me a little sanctimonious. Forgive me, I'm sorry if this is a weird question. What was the war like? It was great. You got to see people turn into animals and your close friends die. I'm sorry, I knew it was a dumb question. It, it's just I hoped it wasn't so awful for you. No. It was seeing your home destroyed. Seeing members of your family die. My aunt, the Roman's mother, she was... She was... She was raped and murdered. I found her. Roman does not know. He thought she died in a house fire. I'm so sorry. The world is hard. What are you going to do? Maybe you're right. The war taught me a lot of bad things. But it also taught me to enjoy life. I like that. Yeah. You have no idea how I felt when I first heard this. And I only heard it just this year. It tore me because I never really took Kate that seriously in the game and hardly went out with her. But when I did because I was oftentimes bored, this really made me feel so bad for Roman. Especially for all that he's lost throughout the game, and especially if he ends up dying towards the end. This in my opinion was one of the darkest moments in GTA 4. Number 1. Eddie Lowe This character sets the standard for having some of the most darkest moments in GTA history. For those who don't know Eddie Lowe, he is a character in GTA 4 who happens to be a serial killer who was abandoned by his father, had a strict mother, and was abused by a family member. He also has history of animal cruelty. In GTA 4, you can see more about Eddie Lowe and his creepy personality by going to the internet cafe and going on a website called whatthedonotwantyoutoknow.com, which shows you how deranged he is. Then there's Nico, who can come across Eddie in a couple of side missions. The first one begins here by the autoerotic car lot. 
Hey there, pal. Hey. Hey. Hey, what are you doing out here so late? What's it to you? Nothing. Just trying to make conversation. Just trying to keep the loneliness at bay. You know. Whatever you say. Hey, uh, you're not from around here, are you? No. I'm from Florida. <laughs> you're funny. You're a real joker. I knew a joker once. Lovely guy. Came to a rather unfortunate end, though. But I suppose we all do. In the end. Okay. Wait, 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 mister. Um, do you ever wonder, do you ever wonder if animals, if they masturbate? <laughs> okay, listen, friend, you're really creeping me out. No, it's a silly question. I know, silly question. It's just I was wondering because maybe that's what makes us different uh, from the animals. I mean, masturbating. Because it turns out we don't have souls and animals use tools and all that kind of thing. So maybe it's the masturbating. Maybe that's God's real gift to us. Okay, I'd really like to get back to planet Earth, so maybe I'll see no, you No, wait, later. wait a minute, mister. I'm sorry. I'm strange. I'm a weird guy. I know. <laughs> hey, hey, do you have a car? Can you get one? Why? Because I have this rather heavy bag and I really need a lift. I can pay you. Okay, okay. Thanks. I'm Eddie, by the way. Eddie Lowe. Yes, huh? fine. Come on. You got the shit to catch. You going somewhere? I'm not going anywhere. My friends are, though. They're heading off. <laughs> That's a funny joke. Joke? Joke? Eddie never jokes. Eddie needs to be taken seriously. They laughed at him once. But you can't laugh without a tongue. You can't point if you haven't got fingers, can you? That's what Daddy told me late at night in my room. Easy there, buddy. We're friends, aren't we? We can talk to one another, share things. Spill your guts. Ew. I don't like doing that. It's smelly. I'm kidding. Isn't the world strange and nasty? I mean, a girl looks at you, but it turns out she doesn't love you at all. It turns out she's a whore. You're kind of a strange guy, Eddie. Have you ever considered psychotherapy? You've got issues. My only issue is I don't accept the world's bullshit. Wait here for me, friend. Special friend. I'm just dropping the kids off. Yeah, you can already take a good guess about this guy. Person with the heavy duffel bag, talks about things that don't represent normal human behavior, and if it's even worth mentioning, it becomes densely foggy in the game. You look caliente. You wanna make some calor with me? Ah, my adoring public. Glad I got rid of that. Wouldn't want to get caught with it. People can be so narrow-minded. Can, can you take me to Westminster? I like Westminster. Lots of nice boys there. It's one of my hunting grounds. Never gets you off, friend. Yeah, I like boys. I like girls, too. Both are fun in different ways. The same ways as well. You were all the same under those layers of hair and skin and fat. Everyone's got the same rotten livers and black hearts underneath it all. Sure. You should visit planet Earth sometime. Where are you from, pal of mine? What's your accent? Are you from uh, East Europe? Romania? Bulgaria? Balkans. Hey, you're a smart guy. Eddie's smart. Eddie's real smart. They always told him that. Eddie, you're smart. Why don't you play with the other kids? Don't touch him like that, Eddie. Stop it, Eddie! Uh, stop it! Yeah, stop it, Eddie, please. <laughs> Your accent's funny. You know that you can hear accents when people scream? I can tell what borough people are from just by hearing them scream. I've heard enough Alderney accents tonight. Oh, God! Oh, God! <laughs> I want to hear some nice, rounded, Algonquin voices. Please stop! <laughs> please! Stop it! Do, do you see that? You're making me a little uncomfortable, Eddie. I hope you're joking. I'm sorry, pal. Of course I'm joking. 
Do you think that I'm weird? Please. I'm just a no bullshit kind of guy. So, so what's your name? And what do you do? Huh? Those are normal questions. Nico Bellic. And I do what I can to survive. To get by. That's cryptic. Things must be difficult for you. Do you hurt other people, Nico? If they get in my way. I wouldn't want to get in your way, Nico. I wouldn't want you to get in mine either. Oh, we're good friends now, uh huh? Special friends. Here we are. Eddie's off to hunt for a nice boy. Thank you, Nico. Thank you, friend. I'll see you later, man eater. Eddie replicating and mimicking the screams of people become haunting to listen to and almost unbearable. Every Let's Player I've seen come across this character has felt absolutely shocked to their core and disgusted. It is worth noting that a Weasel News report plays right after dropping off Eddie that night. Weasel News. Liberty City remains under siege as another body was found, this time at the Liberty Ferry Terminal in Alderney City. A decapitated jogger who was getting fit in the wrong place at the wrong time. Detective John Atkinson has been working the case. Oh, thank God he did it again. I was beginning to lose my media profile. We'll be making an arrest soon. How's my hair look? But it's not over yet. A few days later, Nico comes across Eddie again. Hey there, pal. Hey. Hey. Nico, the Belkin sociopath. Eddie Lowe, the animal masturbator. <laughs> you and your wicked sense of humor. You're quite naughty. Quite, quite naughty. Whatever. Quite naughty. Do you like to get spanked? Like, like that? Excuse me? <laughs> no, nothing silly. I'm just being silly. Silly little Billy, that's me. <laughs> I, I like it, though. I like to get spanked. Fuck off. You're creeping me out. No, I don't want to make you angry, Nico. I don't want to be creepy. It's just my way. Well, your way is not cool. Not cool? You say it is not cool? I don't fit in with the in crowd? Well, Mrs. Smith, Eddie's taken your star son, your prized little quarterback, and fucked him in the ass, and then tied him up, strangled him into knots, and your daughter? Your pretty little daughter, Mrs. Abraham, and he's ripped out her intestines just to see if he could feel anything. And you know what? He couldn't. Yeah, he couldn't. You should get laid or something. Oh, I just did. A little jogger down by the water. But you know what, handsome? I got a hunger tonight that can't be sated. Come here! Huh. Ugh. Oh. Ugh. Careful! Oh, you think I'm a joke? Don't make me kill you! Come on, get up! At this point, Nico kills Eddie Lowe, ending one of Liberty City's biggest nightmares. It still shakes me to my core every time when I come across Eddie Lowe in GTA 4. I can't help but really appreciate Rockstar on how realistic they went on this character. Weasel News. The unnamed serial killer who has plagued Liberty City for months and baffled the police department's nickname division has been found dead, himself seemingly the victim of a murder. The man who was found with several journals confessing to his crimes appears to have targeted the wrong victim and been killed in a fight. The killer's name was Eddie Lowe. Police are searching his apartment in a quiet Duke suburb for more information. Residents were angry. It's always the same thing when they catch a mass murderer. He was real quiet. They say, I say we start shooting quiet people and we won't have this problem. Loners. And there you have it. This is my list of the 10 darkest moments in GTA 4. I hope you enjoyed this Halloween special, and if you did, then please support me by liking this video and subscribing. And might I add, throw some of your thoughts about this video down below, or even some of the other darker moments that you feel should be on this list. Here are some of the videos that you can check out on the screen. First one on the top left is a graphics mod that is about to be released soon called Ice Enhancer 4.0, which is what I used in the video along with Project Revive. Second one on the top right is my way of converting GTA 4 into GTA 5 as an experiment, which is truly mind-blowing. Third one on the bottom left is where I managed to add episodes from Liberty City content into GTA 4. Thanks for watching!